Welcome to Moments with Me. We have a very special guest today. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Brown. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time to chat and talk about inclusion while we're at the Out and Equal Summit. How exciting to be I here. I know. I've been coming for 15 years to this. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's been great. Um, I always think I've really grown up with this, with this community, with this conversation, with this conference. And the way that Out and Equal focuses its energy on the workplace conversation has been um, just really shaped my thinking. And you know, I think we've been very forward as a community on a lot of things that we wanted to accomplish, whether it was policies or laws or workplace inclusion um, or the corporate equality index. You know, I think this community literally has created all of those benchmarks and made actually done all the work to actually make the workplace better for us mm -hmm. and that's what we've been talking about for 15 years and then I you know I've been able to apply that to a lot of other communities that I advocate for and the work that I do in my consulting um, because what we've done can be replicated you know in other other areas of challenge where we still are you know have underrepresented people of so many different identities and diversities so it's just a great community. I think we, I, well, I think obviously it's a special group of people. <laughs> Certainly. The yeah. energy here is just so loving yeah. and inclusive. Yeah. And when they talk about belonging, that's you feel us it. right here. Yes, for sure. Yes. So and for many beautiful. people, it's not a common feeling. I mean, this conference is really, really like, like food and shelter and community for people that may not live in a place where they feel that regularly and they may not work for a company. Maybe they're the only person here from their company, or maybe they could never even get here because their company wouldn't pay for them to come, and maybe they're here under their own steam, you know? So, yeah, I think we have to remember and be really humble Absolutely. about how lucky we are. So with the growth of all of this advocacy, how do you find the opportunity with the future and inclusion? In the growth of, of, of inclusivity or yes. authenticity, how yes. do you find the opportunities for growth. Yeah, what do you see as the biggest opportunity for growth in the, the future? Biggest opportunity. Um, I think it's to be intersectional with mm -hmm. our lenses. Mm -hmm. So we have traditionally thought about diverse dimensions or diversity dimensions as kind of binary. Mm -hmm. And so we in the community know that identity is not a binary, mm -hmm. um, both on sexual orientation and also gender identity and gender expression. Um, but, but any kind of identity, I mean, isn't a binary. Uh, so, so, but workplaces and HR kind of and business in general forces you into boxes so that we can be counted, mm -hmm. but it's not an accurate uh, descriptor, obviously. It leaves a lot out of the picture. So um, the biggest opportunity, I think, is to develop the, the language and the systems mm -hmm. to track, like truly capture like the, the, all the diverse identities in people and be comfortable talking about all them. And that means for us too, like comfortable talking about our own intersectionalities, but also honoring that in others and making space for that and using all the right words that people want to be referred to as, not what we think or thought are the right mm -hmm. words because it's always changing, language is always changing. Um, yeah, and then I think we've got to obviously reduce the amount of hiding that we're all doing about our intersectionality. You know, we have to step up and be more of who we are and, and normalize speaking about all of the parts of who we are, particularly those that are deeply hidden or most stigmatized or most unusual, or we think they're unusual, because the truth is they're probably not unusual, but it seems that they are, because yeah. we are responding, I think, to the need to feel safe, of course. Um, and these are could be career-limiting decisions to come out on a variety of, of aspects of who you are. So. I think, so we've got to change the systems, we've got to see more people doing it, and we have to be those people. I love it, and you hit on a few really important points there, and a lot of it is we're so scared to be vulnerable and have those conversations because it doesn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are, or examples of people that have done it well in terms of creating that safe space to have the conversation and have those educational conversations <laughs> where it's safe to yeah. take that step. You know, safety safety kind of takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, yeah, as however tired some of us may feel, because we're always educating, 
I do think that if we want progress, it's sort of, yes, I'm tired, but can I, can I engage in one more conversation explaining the importance of pronouns, you know? <laughs> I mean, I personally, it's interesting, I'm a, I'm a person of many privileges as well, and I think that it's up to those of us with more, relatively more privilege mm -hmm. to be the ones that have the educational conversations mm -hmm. on behalf of so that other people can take a break mm -hmm. for a little while. Um, you know, it's, it's a tag team. You know, we need to work in tandem with each other. Some of us may have an easier time answering a question. I literally had a conversation I was in recently. I had an 80 year old white straight cis man on one side and I had my gender non-binary friend Kat on the left side. And I was getting asked all the questions mm. by the straight cis white guy. And I was so, I kept looking to her, her and them and saying, would you like to respond? Mm -hmm. Or am I describing this correctly? Mm -hmm. And I was answering all these questions about identity. And Kat said, um, no, please keep going. Like, please keep, you know, you're doing great. And it was this beautiful illustration of the role that I think I play and that so many of us need to kind of step into, which mm -hmm. is like, give somebody a break, <laughs> know your stuff, like certainly don't wing it, you know, make sure that you're informed and that you are actually educating in an effective way, an accurate way. Yeah. But, um, but for me, I felt that was such a great role for me to give somebody a break mm -hmm. that constantly has to like deal with all these questions and wrongly being wrongly gendered and, um, like I want, I want Kat to have a break. So mm -hmm. anyway, it was just cool. And, and I was flexing my muscle, you know, I was practicing, how do I educate an 80 year old straight white cis <laughs> man about what this means? You know, that's the ultimate challenge, honestly. It's not, you know, preaching to the choir and like, cause everybody understands what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Literally pick the hardest person to talk to about these things and exercise your chops as an ally. Like see if you can get it across to somebody. Um, and by the way, without being triggered and all that fun stuff too, which you know still happens to me, and but it happen it, maybe it happens to me less mm -hmm. because I have less stigmatized identities that I am navigating as a white cis, you know, gay woman. I also am white. I'm all you know. I there's so many things that just make that whole conversation easier. Mm -hmm. And I and I think. Yeah, so anyway, we just we need to we need to partner with each other and and do more of this, I think. But we, that means we need more would-be allies, aspiring allies to really be comfortable managing those conversations. And that's a big lift. That's the other kind of future thing I think we really need to figure out is what does allyship look like? We were just talking about um, accomplicing, mm -hmm. which takes it to another level. Uh, if you think about uh, Patty Dingle just described in the room, um, if you're my accomplice, you're 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 in my getaway car, like with the engine running, and like all I need to do is just jump in and say drive. <laughs> like that's the accomplice, it. right? And it's the it's an unheralded role. It is a silent role if it is, or or it's a loud role. You know, I don't know, but it's 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 literally, um, you know, I got your back, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a beautiful term. So so we have just a lot of exploration to do there, and we can all be this too. It's not just up to white people, and it's not just up to um, it's not just up to white straight people like we all have to do this for everyone around us in sort of a 360 way it's not like I'm like an ally to you because I have all the privilege mm -hmm. there is like literally no such thing almost no such thing I mean there are some people who have all the like no challenges in their life don't have any idea what exclusion felt like don't have any diversity dimensions going on for themselves or maybe loved ones it is a rare person so I think we can all do a little bit of all of this. Absolutely. And I think the main core to this is we're all human. And being human, yeah. we need to stick up for other people, even when it's scary and we might not know what to say. Mm -hmm. um, I think the educational aspect is really important. Do you have any resources? Or if there was a dream resource, what would that look like? Ah, I love it. Oh, gosh. If there were a dream resource. I just, I just was in a, um, a virtual reality workshop on unconscious bias and literally wow. everybody put the goggles on and like there was a scenario going on and you're literally like, you, you are the woman in the all male team sitting at the table. You look down with your headset on and you can see your hands, you know, and you can see that you're taking notes because maybe somebody asked you to take notes because that's what happens with women. 
You should never take notes in a meeting <laughs> as a woman. Just bear that in mind. <laughs> just watch out and don't like clear the dishes at the you know the table and don't and no like none of that. Anyway, but you're in the, you have these goggles on and you're in it. And it's been shown that um, behavior change and sort of the the, the power of, of that experience when it's coupled with scenarios and learning and you know you could do multiple choice in VR now so you can basically like choose your own adventure like figure out like what would I do in that situation what do you wish that person had done what do you think the inner monologue is of that person if we could kind of expose people to all the different scenarios that happen I think it honestly would people be like oh I was so uncomfortable or oh I didn't see that or oh, I didn't think about that when I said that you know, it just would put you in that moment. And I think it would have happen fast. And once it happens, you won't forget it. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully you're human enough and you have a big enough heart, right, to say, or or you're like smart that like, this is bad for business. Like I shouldn't do that or people shouldn't do that. Like I don't want anyone feeling like that mm -hmm. around me. Um, so I think that's something that we're sort of totally immersive. I think we get the job done faster than like classroom training or reading a book. I mean, I, I have two books, so I hope the book is helpful. I've been told it is. I hope my podcast is helpful, The Will to Change, because it centers those stories that many people have never even considered, which I think is part of it. So it's literally like expo fast exposure, mm -hmm. multimedia, whichever way you learn the best, mm -hmm. if it's auditory, if it's visual, if it's kinesthetic. Um, you know, just the, the ability to get those aha moments faster and, and really scale that because the biggest challenge is a lack of awareness that mm -hmm. people are feeling and experiencing what they are feeling and experiencing, I, I find. And so a lot of my work will be like, did you know the people in your workforce when we did focus groups told us that this is what it feels like to be a woman of color in this workplace? You know, did you know this? Did you know, by the way, did you know you had a pay gap? Did you know that you don't actually have gender parity in your organization? Even though when I asked you if you did, you said yes. <laughs> like literally there is like a total lack of understanding of the reality and the facts, which is kind of the world we're living in, isn't it? But I don't think in the workplace it's pernicious. It's not like fake news. I, I don't think it's a denial. I just literally think it's a cluelessness and it's a belief that we are good people. Of course, everybody feels that they have equal opportunity here. Like, why wouldn't they? Because I have felt that way. <laughs> so literally, it's, it's, it's delicate. But what you have to dismantle is people's belief that being a good person is enough to shift all the things that need to be shifted. It's not enough. You know, and frankly, it's, it's kind of a cop out these days because you should know what's going on in your organization. You should care about it and you should use whatever power you have, whatever platform you have to change it. Like period, you know, so any kind of, I don't know about that. I'm in denial about it. I don't believe it's true. You know, all of those are deflections from, you know, literally doing what needs to be done. So long answer. That's so I could important. go on and on, but. It's That's <laughs> so important. And I think the whole awareness and education, the blockage there that suffocates people, because there's so many moments where you can intervene and prevent something mm -hmm. from happening where somebody feels uncomfortable or yeah. the many scenarios, but embracing that courage and knowing that it's safe to speak up and take that action. I also love how you mentioned the different kinds of learning, and I think mm -hmm. that that's such a huge opportunity with technology, whether it's a podcast or an in-person event or however you learn best, catering to your skills to then help you educate and have that awareness in a way that resonates with you. And also you mentioned that fast initial like getting it, like yeah. putting on VR goggles. Are you kidding? Like you can't escape. Can I tell you there's a scenario in the one I'm thinking of where, so you're sitting at the table, you have the goggles on and uh, Maybe it's a man with the goggles on, right? Mm -hmm. Experiencing a woman's experience. Mm -hmm. And um, a man in the meeting comes around the table and literally stands right next to you with his crotch, mm -hmm. like right at eye level, because you're seated and he's standing. And literally, the, I've heard that this is true. My friend that runs these exercises that has the VR company, the men in that scenario with the goggles on will, will rip the goggles off. Like, just like end the experience. They're so uncomfortable with another man coming right next to them and they're putting like just standing there just standing there like talking to you which it crotches at eye level right so the level of I just wish that 
Well, first of all, there's so many things that are wrong with that <laughs> happening that I won't go into. But I just wish that there were empathy. You know, that I, I just wish we could step into each other's shoes because if we did that for a second, we would understand, like, this does not feel good. I don't feel welcome in this room. I don't feel, nobody's talking to me. People are stealing my ideas. Nobody has said my name correctly. Nobody's even bothered to learn my name. I mean, like, or, or I, don't, I don't have a bathroom that I can go in that I'm comfortable because nobody's talking about, like, who I am. Like, nobody even knows to ask the question. So that literally is just the, the, the lack of awareness is massive. <laughs> and I know, you know, we try to do unconscious bias training, and, which is, you know, fine, but it, it, it focuses a lot to me on the science of all this that we've been talking about. That's all well and good. <laughs> Like, but then what do I do about it? And by the way, it's kind of been shown to make people feel a little bit ashamed and kind of bad. And I don't want to leave a conversation about inclusion with people feeling bad because then that's not in the learning space, <laughs> to your point. It's not in that, like, I have to feel okay about myself if I'm going to be open to the aha moment. Otherwise, I'm kind of really distracted and I'm not really listening and I'm in that kind of self-defense mode, which is not that, not the creative space. So um, we just have to figure out how to how to somehow you know worm our way in and you know give people a lot of prompts, figure out what kind of learner they are. Um, we didn't we haven't even talked about like abilities in terms of learning. I mean, you know, we've had to go through entire training programs and make sure that we're using the correct numbers. I'm sorry, the correct colors and describing the images for those who are blind to make sure that they're tracking with our materials. You know, so there's all these these other um, accommodations that you can you should make in order to create an inclusive learning environment, um, and that's uh, even I always use a microphone, even though when we stand up in a room we say, oh, the microphone isn't working. Like, can everybody hear me? Even that, somebody somebody is not going to speak up and say, no, I actually can't hear very well, but I don't really talk about it, and I'm not going to self-identify, so I always use a microphone. You know, and so it's just these things. Like, I just wish. And there are really good books, like with literally like lists and lists and lists and lists of people of good ally behaviors. Ask this, do this, don't do that. Check in on this, you know, monitor for this, get feedback on that. You know, it's it's literally like I should be kind of thinking about that every leader. And it doesn't, you're a leader at all levels. It doesn't matter if you have people responsibilities or any team members or whatever. We should all be like, like exercising this muscle noticing who's not in the room, having the hard conversations, you know, being like, who can I align with that doesn't have a voice where I can somehow like have a conversation with somebody or challenge something so that somebody else doesn't have to put themselves in the line of fire like over and over and over again. That is the definition. And I mean, I personally, I don't think it's an extra thing on my to-do list. It literally makes me a better human. <laughs> like I can't imagine being like, I don't want to learn any of that. I just want to keep going. I don't know. People are different. <laughs> That's beautiful. But at the end of the day, we're all human. Yeah, exactly. And we can get back to that. And you know, if you think diversity doesn't have to do with you, just wait. I mean, you have kids, you have grandkids, you've got, you know, some a kid who comes out to you as, you know, trans, like it's going to come to your life. Like in some aspect of your place of worship or your community or your school community or your whatever, or your work for this company now, but you have a new team, right? One in five, I read this statistic, one in five people under the age of 35 does not identify as straight and does not identify as cisgender, one in five. So I share that statistic, wanting to make sure that people who think this is not pertaining to them, uh, you've got another thing coming, so you just better better polish up. <laughs> it is so important. Yeah. I appreciate all these really important lessons and values that you've touched upon. If there's one thing that you want listeners to walk away with this podcast as a tool in their toolkit, what would it be? Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, one thing? Give me one thing. <laughs> You're not very nice. Oh, gosh. You can do one and then some. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I would say take on intersectionality and think about the communities of identity that you don't know enough about and create a learning plan. And that in would include reading, listening, media watching, friends in your network or not in your network that need to be in your network. 
um, going to you know meetings and being the only one in the room so that you can learn putting yourself in uncomfortable places you know because you've got to remember that like other people are uncomfortable all the time basically Literally. right so it's it's I would say your learning plan and then that's going to come from you know a lot of different sources please check out my two books my first book called inclusion my second one called how to be an inclusive leader um, I know it's not perfect your audience may be like incredibly progressive and maybe maybe notice some things that are missing from my my own work uh, but I tell you the work the world I'm in um, it is really slow going and my second book in particular I sort of wrote I wrote for sort of the 101 folks it's like get in the conversation like do something do even if it's small even if it's just one thing but get on the journey, start to explore that. And um, even if we had a lot of people doing that, more, more people doing that than are doing that now, I think we'd be accelerating this movement, which is really my goal. So um, yeah, that's that would be my call to action. I love yeah. it. Thank you so much for taking <laughs> You're the time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And um, kudos to all your listeners. And um, I love the podcast. So best of luck. Thank you And maybe so I can much. source more great guests for you from my um, like amazing my inspiring network of, of people of all all backgrounds that are doing such good work and don't dismiss corporate America. It's um there's actually some pretty fulfilling roles in it and there's lots of this conversation going on in certain companies and I'm trying to push that along myself and um, so is my team. So I love to hear it and I'm excited to be a part of creating an inclusive future and starting the conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.